I'm Isra Mardini. I am now 23 years old. I am a refugee from Syria. I live in Germany now, and uh, I've been in Germany for almost uh, six years now. I uh, left my country um, because of war. Uh, the war started in my country when I was, I think, 15 years old. Uh, no, a little bit younger, actually, 13 years old. And um, I'm going to back you up a little bit on my story. I, uh, I grew up in Syria, in Damascus, in the capital. I started swimming when I was three years old. My father was my coach. And um, yeah, I continued swimming. And then I thought of, you know, becoming a professional swimmer and thought of uh, being an Olympic swimmer at only the age of nine years old. I wanted to become an Olympian. And this is um, what I worked for my whole life. I had a normal life in Syria where I went to school, I went to training normally, and I had friends and, you know, family members and so on. And uh, when I was 13, the war started, so everything changed for me. I couldn't train normally. I couldn't go to school normally. It, was, it wasn't safe anymore. Uh, me and my family, we lost our house um, in, my, in my home country, and um, it became difficult to, 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 to have a normal life. Uh, so back then I decided uh, with my sister because lots of Syrian people were deciding to flee the country uh, because it wasn't safe anymore for me or my dreams or my family. So uh, me and my older sister, we decided to leave the country and try to find a better chance um, of life in Germany. So this is exactly what we did uh, back in 2015. Uh, I mean, my older sister, she's three years older than me. Uh, we decided to flee the country. And that's exactly what we did. Uh, but of course, the journey was illegal. The journey was dangerous. And uh, it took us 25 days to reach to Germany. Um, we had to cross seven countries illegally to get to Germany. And uh, one point, at one point, as example, we uh, fled the country through uh, the plane from Syria to Beirut and then from Beirut to Istanbul. And then from there you have to take a boat. And um, they tell you it's 45 minutes, but uh, it took us three hours and a half to get to Greece, to the other shore. Um, after 15 minutes of getting on the boat, the motor stopped and uh, me, my sister and two other guys, we had to jump to the water to try to stabilize the boat. We tried to, you know, we threw all of our stuff outside of the water, uh, outside of the boat, sorry, to try and keep the boat floating. Um, and after three hours and a half, we got to Greece. After getting to Greece, we continued with buses, with trains, walking. We crossed uh, from Greece to Serbia, uh, no, from Greece to uh, Macedonia and then Macedonia, Serbia. After Serbia, we got to Hungary. After Hungary, we got to Vienna and then we got to Germany. And um, yeah, the first few months of getting to Germany were a little bit hard for me because I had to start from zero again as a 17 years old um, girl uh, or a teenager. And uh, this was one of the hardest things I had to do in my life, after, of course, after the journey. Um, lots of people have this perception of refugees that we are not educated, that we leave our countries because we want like luxury life or, or money and all of that. And uh, I think it's not wrong as any, any person in the world to think that you want to live the luxury life, but some people don't want that. But refugees leave their countries because of war. Refugees leave their countries because they just want to live a life where they are not afraid to lose their lives every day. And this is exactly why we left our countries. So um, the first few weeks in Germany were very hard for me, like to, to get to know people. Uh, we were in a refugee camp, so I couldn't really get uh, to know like new people. And uh, yeah, after, after a while, I started swimming again. I decided to keep on training for the Olympic Games. And uh, this is exactly what I did. I uh, met lots of swimmers. I continued my training every day. I met a coach that helped me 
um, and after a while I got a scholarship from the International Olympic Committee. Um, then the biggest surprise was that I was selected as a member of the first ever refugee Olympic team in 2016. And um, this Olympics was a really game changer for me because first of all, I, uh, I got to represent millions of refugees around the world. I got to carry this message of hope to the world uh, saying, you know what, I'm a, refugees, I'm, a, I'm a refugee, but here I stand. Um, I was super proud to, to, to give people hope around the world. And the moment I entered the stadium, I was proud of the re word refugee because I was struggling with it before because people are always thinking in a bad way about what a refugee is. And uh, since then, I decided to take the word and embrace it. I decided to say, you know what, I'm a refugee. I went through hardship and there are millions of refugees that are going through such tough journeys and uh, I can advocate for them. And after that, I got appointed uh, as a Goodwill Ambassador when I was only 19. I uh, brought a book about my story, which is called Butterfly. Uh, you can read then my story in details and uh, hopefully next year a Hollywood movie will go out. But for now, I um, so uh, after 2016, I continued swimming because I wanted still to go to the Olympics and I wanted to swim better than I swam in Rio. Uh, so that's exactly what I did. And um, I qualified again this year. I was at the Summer Olympics, to, uh, Tokyo 2020. And uh, to be honest, it was very emotional for me because um, after COVID and after everything that happened in the world, I uh, felt like, you know, I when you know that your dream might happen or not, that's one thing. But then when COVID hit, we didn't even know that the Olympics is going to happen. So all the athletes around the world were working for something that might not happen. So this alone mentally was very, very tough for us. And uh, it taught me a lot. It taught me to care more about people. It taught me that really we are stronger together all around the world. I saw countries standing, you know, side by side to make the, the world a better place. And when I saw that, I, I, I thought, OK, we stood next to each other to fight a pandemic. We can stand next to each other to fight also um, wars and, and, and to stop wars, actually. And to say we can help refugees all around the world, we can welcome refugees in our countries all around the world. Um, so yeah, I after I went to the Olympics, uh, now I I came back and uh, now this is what I'm I'm continuing to swim, and um, yeah, unfortunately in the few few past weeks, uh, the 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 number of refugees increased around the world because of what's happening um, in Afghanistan and because of, uh, you know, people fleeing. And I want just to let everybody know that those people do not have a choice, that they want to just feel safe. They, um, they need a safe place to stay. And um, everything that's happening in their country is not their fault. So how we can try to make uh, refugees feel, feel welcome is by you know, advocating for them by donating to uh, whatever um, NGO you feel that you can trust uh, or an organization. As example, I work with UNHCR and I trust them fully. Uh, they're always doing incredible work for refugees all around the world. So, um, yeah, I think we all can open our hearts and minds for refugees. The least we can do is learn about them, edu educate ourselves about refugees and open our hearts to understand what they went through. Because um, I know lots of refugees still like here in Germany, they're homesick, they're still struggling with fitting in. Um, as example, my parents are um, 45 and 50 years old, so they're still struggling to kind of fit in the community because they came here when um, they got a bit, they were a bit older. So, um, yeah, I think we all can help refugees and we all can open our doors for them. Um, yeah, so this is basically my story in a really, really uh, short version. And honestly, I am very happy to be here. And uh, I hope that all of you uh, 
um, you know, hold on to your dreams. And uh, for me, as example, uh, one thing that I learned in life is uh, to to never give up, to always believe on the thing you wanna you wanna achieve in life. And I know that sometimes it's hard. Lots of people are telling you you can't make it. Lots of people are giving you opinions about uh, who you are or who you have to be. But um, yeah, I'm here today to tell you that uh, you can be whatever you wanna be. And sometimes not everyone's gonna believe in you and that's fine as long as you believe in yourself. And um, yeah, after you know the storms and after the, the tough journeys, there are always a, there's always a glimpse of rainbow afterwards. So um, to be honest, I do not have any doubt that all of you are working so hard for your dreams and uh, giving it your all. Uh, my uh, last uh, few words or last message is to, you know, um, we, we really do have to do more for refugees. We have to open our hearts and minds again for refugees and we have to talk about it more. Uh, my story is one in very, uh in 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 a thousands of other stories about refugees and um my story is not even the toughest of all of them i heard lots of stories about refugees and i met lots of refugees and i got very inspired by how resilient they were and how um strong they were even though after they lost everything they still were fighting for their, their dreams and the biggest um, the biggest example is the refugee Olympic team in Rio and in Tokyo. We were different. We came from different continents. We had different backgrounds, different stories. But at the end, we stood up together. We represented one team all around the world. And we said here, we went through hardship, but here we are representing refugees all around the world. And this um, was one of the proudest moments of my life. So really, if you believe in something, uh, give it your all and I'm 100% sure that you'll make it.